have a somebody or a spouse or a kid or a father or somebody contact me and say, help, what do we do? How do we get medical care? Going all the way back to the nuclear testing. Well, as you said, told me 16, 17 years ago on air, they go in with their kidneys felling and they go, here's some Prozac or the, the, the new drugs. And then I have these Navy vets on here having to sue. They won't even give them medical attention because they don't want to admit they've got radiation poisoning. Well, they can't admit they have any of these toxic exposures. Just for example, right here in Rantoul, Illinois, Chinook Air Force Base, total confirmation the trichloroethylene contamination in the Wisconsin aquifier, you've got the documents, you can verify it, exceeds what they know at Camp Lejeune, and everybody in the military and the VA and DOD is freaking out about Camp Lejeune and the health effects, but they're disregarding all of these other installations, all these bases are contaminated, because... To admit one, they have to admit all. And once they have to admit all, they have to provide medical care to everybody going way back before. So That's right. right. And by the way, every time you come on, you always send us a bunch of documents. So while you're talking about this, for radio listeners, he's putting it on screen, and by tomorrow we'll have that video archive from the live feed that's going out now. It'll be on Infowars.com for everybody. Like uh, the Pentagon's own reports that you cite where they admit DU's killing the troops, but then they still deny it on the news. It's just dastardly. Yeah, they don't care. I mean, you have to understand, in March of 1991, the Los Alamos Memorandum was issued, and I was handed that by the generals. And it was a direct order to lie in our reports to avoid liability, knowing full well all of the serious health and environmental effects. You can't take radiological materials, chemical and biological materials distributed all over the world, all over an area, release it, and not expect the health effects which have been known from day one, and then just say, well, there's no problem. You're all making it up in your imagination. And then what they do, and this is what's horrible, absolutely horrible, is they give them psychotropic drugs and all this other stuff that have no effect there other than dumping them down and then make them feel good for a few minutes, but it doesn't solve the problem. I mean, it doesn't solve the problem. All it does is mask it. And the next thing we know is we got suicide upon suicide and kids giving up and families giving up and families in crisis and child and spouse abuse. Oh, my. Dr. Doug Rocky is our guest. Shifting gears then to what you were wanting to talk about and what I wanted to get you on about, Fukushima and the same story, oh, it's not a big deal, and then not even helping the people that were on the ships or on the ground who are all getting incredibly sick on record. Yeah, the Fukushima thing, when that first started, on the, when that happened, I was in the War Injuries Clinic, number one clinic for health effects on my and my team, in Washington, D.C., with the number one doctors in the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. And they're sitting there looking. It's all here. It's all here. Everything you said is all here. Wait a minute. You're teaching us, and we're supposed to be taking care of you. So when this was all happening there, I'm standing there. I say, we need to take care of these people immediately. We need to provide them the mandatory radio bioassays and look at this stuff for which we have the document. Here's the orders. Who wrote them? They look at Yeah, Doug, you did, didn't you? Yeah, I go, yeah, how about that? Why aren't you taking care of those people? Now, as you mentioned, they talked about potassium iodide. That's irrelevant. The only thing that does is it locks the absorption of iodine-131, the radioactive iodide, into the, into, the, you know, into the body, okay? Exactly. That's not good when you're right up against the actual hot radiation like yeah, in but Fukushima. The, but the radiation is still zapped your butt and it's still in the body. So just because the thyroid doesn't absorb that one, it's already in the body, it's already there, so the damage is done. It's sort of like you turn the light on. Once the light comes off, you turn the light on, your body is hurt. But then you have all the incredible particulates and contamination. So when all that happened, I literally contacted the Navy, the Ronald Reagan, because I got their emails and everything, and said, this is what you need to do. Here are the regulations mandated for training, mandated for environmental remediation, mandated for decontamination. And it's a nuclear-powered uh, carrier, so they should know to follow their own rules. Correct. I've crawled all over that carrier. I mean, personally, I've crawled all over that carrier. I mean, I've been, you know, I haven't been down in the reactor department, but I've been all over it. And the thing is, just a warrant of all things. So all this contamination was brought in. So they were less than a mile off, offshore at the reactor. All the stuff came in. Now, all the people are sick. Now, the medical care should be provided, and it should have been done day one, but they didn't do it because they can't acknowledge it. Now, the question that's come up, and the latest information I got from some of the sailors that have called here and the parents that have called here, 
because the question is whether or not the Ronald Reagan needs to be totally scrapped as a ship because of the extent of contamination. Now, what we learned from the research I did in both in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, but more important, at the Nevada test site, Mercury, Nevada, for the Department of, Department of Defense, Geiger counters don't work. And you can take all day long, and you're not going to find the contamination because of the way it works. And that's why so many people are sick. So when you look at the health effects on all of us and everybody else and all the Iraqis so, and everybody else have been contaminated, the guys in Somalia, the Balkans, all over the place, Vieques, Puerto Rico, Hawaii is a nightmare on the main island of Hawaii and Oahu from the EU. And you see the health effects are absolutely what's listed in the official VA document. So what should happen to the Ronald Reagan? Pardon? Well, what should happen to the Ronald Reagan then? Well, the Ronald Reagan, what should have happened right off the bat is the ship should have been pulled and decontaminated if they could even do it. The other thing, too, is they got to get bioassays or medical care based on the signs and symptoms all the soldiers or sailors are having. Well, this is the big issue I want to ask you then. And th this is the crux of it. The, the the troops have been treated like worse than worse than birdcage liner for a long time, but undoubtedly the last few decades it, it it's gotten even worse. The attitude with the deadly dust on 9/11 that they knew was deadly and they decided to cover up because they didn't want to admit it was deadly. Uh, with the DU, with Fukushima, uh, with things that are in vaccines and things that are in drugs. I mean, even in the 60s, if a drug was hurting people, they would recall it. I've I've read it. I've studied it. They weren't perfect then, but there were a lot of recalls. Uh, now they'll recall something if it's petty and doesn't matter, but if it's really big, they'll just ignore it and keep going ahead with it. So, so what I'm asking you is, what is the cultural change, or has it always been there, to absolutely not care about human life and just contaminate everything, and is it getting worse? It's greed. I mean, it's greed and money and control and power. I mean, look at everything that's happened throughout the Middle East and now into the Soviet Union and the Ukraine. All of this is about control of resources, control of terrain, control of pipeline things to get it over. Who's going to control what? I mean, we're looking at the, all the stuff in Syria. That's all about the pipeline coming out of Iraq and everything in Iran across in through Syria out to the coast. And they've got to get that all stuff so Assad doesn't want to go along with the same thing of what happened in Afghanistan, what's happened in Iraq. We're seeing it happen in Ukraine. So you've got all the powers that be that want to control everything, but they disregard the health and environmental effects of their military operations. It's sort of like, I mean, with the U.S. military, how many nations have we attacked and invaded now since I joined the military in 67? How many com countries have we destroyed? How much have we contaminated? How many people have got sick and died? Not from the actual combat operations, from the toxic exposures. It's in the millions in the U.S. military. And now you've got all of the health effects on the civilians. It's sort of like, Right here in Chanute Air Force Base, Rantoul, Illinois, the trichloroethylene is off base into the water supplies. The houses where we know the contamination is based, and you got the report, you got the map showing it. They took the people off the map so they don't show up in any map, anything. You won't find it unless you go look for the house, and then they disavow any contamination in the water supply, even though it's on their own report that confirms it. It's staggering, and then anybody that tries to speak up, like the reporters or myself or anybody, boy, watch out. You're not going to be able to buy groceries in town. We're going to put that uh, map up. We have it on screen of, of the contamination there. Just an example of this attitude, uh, and now under Homeland Security rules, they want to make it illegal to expose toxic waste dumping if it's done by a, quote, infrastructure-protected corporation or government group. And I don't get where all these elites think their kids are going to grow up when they could care less about the world. I mean, I, I, I think you're right. I think it's a greed-based, decadent disconnect by the ruling class worldwide, kind of like the Soviets would throw nuclear reactors in a lake, uh, you know, too lazy to even bury it. Or TEPCO would just have bulldozers lightly bury fuel rods that were ejected two miles into farmers' fields. Uh, just, just, It just seems like... An absolute total laziness. I mean, if I if I got a fuel rod, I would be put in prison as a terrorist. Or if they caught me burying a fuel rod on my property, I'd get 100 years in jail under laws. But when government or corporations do it, it's just like, ah, so what? What, what is going on here? 
I wish I had the answer. I mean, it's it's a cover up and a disregard because I think all these people that made the decisions are gone. All right, that causes stuff, and some that are still making decisions are in power. But what they have to do is disavow any connection because then they have to admit they messed up and now take responsibility for it. It's sort of like up there in Western Washington. Okay, anybody that's blowing the whistle up there on all the nuclear studies and nuclear waste and the tanks that are leaking up there, you know, in Western Washington. The message got the other day is the just like on me the retaliation and you know destroy the whistleblower and we're not really whistleblowers we're telling the truth to ensure medical care based on their own internal requirements now granted and depleted uranium I wrote the regulations but General Shinseki who is now the secretary of the VA is a guy that ordered me to do it based on a direct input I gave him you got the documents and then once he signed the Army regulations he never enforced them as an Army general. And now, as a secretary of the VA, disavows any of it there, and his own staff goes around saying, well, there's nobody sick, nobody's sick, and let's say they know where everybody is. Well, and of course, this, this phenomenon that's always been there, but it's getting worse, now leaks into every area with the test scores dropping, the cancer rates going up 3,000% in North America, the breast cancer up even more, the diabetes, uh, the brain disorders, the neurological disorders. I, I mean, it, you look at every metric doctor, and I know you've got multiple degrees and, and have seen it from so many angles. What is happening biologically to North Americans? What, why are we dying? With Dr. Andres Cornegibas said this at the 1999 Center for Disease Control Conference we had on Gulf War illness. And he said, what you have, and we figured this all out, you have all these complex toxic exposures, low-level exposures continuously because of the lifestyle we selected. People want all these advantages in lifestyle, not realizing that the anthem from the 60s and the 70s when you and I were in college starting it is better living through chemistry is actually slow death through chemistry and biology. You can't contaminate air, water, and soil. You can't put all this stuff in the foods. When you look at the foods that are natural and everything that are well done, they're not there. You look at the houses where they don't have all the outgassing in them, you don't see all the health problems we have. Alzheimer's is absolutely, I mean, they've even realized it lately, oh my God, hey, maybe it's an effect of the chemical and pesticide exposures and all the neurotoxins that we got, and going, that's what happened. And we're going, this is what we told you. This is the I was about to say, even Time Magazine admits the chemicals and the fluoride are reducing floor, uh, uh, IQ, and, and, and now, that, now they're not calling it Alzheimer's when 20-year-olds get it. They're calling it, you know, early onset of degenerative neurological functions. So suddenly 20-year-olds are getting Alzheimer's now, doctor. Well, see, that's what we saw with Desert Storm Kids. We had a, a complex toxic exposure, acute exposures, and extraordinarily healthy individuals. All of us were healthy. And then you saw incredible numbers going down with incredible diseases where you saw a 20-year-old with the physiology of a 70-year-old. And you saw all these problems, and it's continued. And now Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom is the same thing. But then what's even worse, and I mean, just tears me apart, is civilians in these areas where we totally contaminated have no access to medical, they have no access to clean water, they have no access to clean sanitation, have no access to good food. And, and the whole area is just deteriorating. So report after report after report. Yeah, Fallujah out. has 14 times to 16 times, depending on the study, higher levels of birth defects. The troops have triple. I know a lot of veterans who are 25, 30 years old, and almost all of them, Hispanic, black, and white, uh, but especially the uh, Hispanic and white guys, all of them, when you look at them, they've got already have gray hair. And it's not just stress, and they've got health problems, and they've got kidney problems. What's going on? Disavowing the connection between all the toxic exposures and the health effects of liability. If we told the American public the truth about the health effects of all of our military operations, whether they're overseas or here at Chanute or in Hawaii, I mean, it all fall apart. It's sort of like, who you want to go to the main island of Hawaii or go on to Oahu when Schofield Barracks and Pukula train area are totally contaminated? And the military, as we speak, are blowing up the contamination and spreading it all over with total, total carte block approval from every organization. We've had Nuclear Regulatory Commission hearings. We've had EPA hearings. We've gone to the State Department of Public Health both in Illinois and Hawaii. And Dr. Doug, and Rocky, uh, turn a blind eye. stay there. I want to hear about how they're blowing it up now, quote, blowing up the contamination on the other side and where you see all this going.
I mean, this is madness, folks, and it ties into this mindset of just not caring about anything. And then you've got all the GMO and all the new stuff being developed. I mean, it is just crazy. We're on the march. The Empire.